Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Kirsten and it's the start of another weekly vlog and we're already off to a better start than last week. First of all, this is starting on a Monday and second of all, I have actually finished a book. I read this pretty much all day yesterday. That's all me and my partner did for Sunday is he was gaming, I was reading, it was really relaxed. But I didn't actually finish this book until quite late in the evening, which is why I didn't make it a part of my last week's vlog. But that does make me feel like this week started off really well. And the book I finished is Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. And this was such a fun, light-hearted romance. It was really good. It did end up coming out as a three stars on Corpal because it's not anything amazing. The plot line, the atmosphere, everything's pretty... It's good, but it's not like amazing or anything like extravagant. It isn't a story that I've really read before. It's kind of similar in a way to A Court of Thorns and Roses in the sense that we have this fae prince coming to take our main character away from her home and she's terrified because the fae's can just kill her in a blink of an eye if she doesn't follow proper protocol. So in a way it kind of had that to it but that's about the only similarity to it because the rest of it is just funny. It was such a funny book. It made me laugh out loud in places and I really did find some moments of this just like it was just a fun read. Like I have no other words. It is a fun read and one particular scene just made me really die of laughter and that is our main character has been taken into the woods and she's very hungry because fey creatures are not used to eating all the time and things like this so they're not used to how mortals are however they cannot lie and so they kind of trust everyone at their word and our main character isabel says to rook rook i cannot go any further i'm hungry i am going to die of hunger if i do not eat and first of all girl same like and then Rook's response is horrified. Like he's absolutely like, oh my God, no, stay here and runs off to go and get her food. It's so funny. And it's just, he's such an innocent character. It makes me laugh so much because he's supposed to be this really strong prince, one of the strongest fey creatures and all of that. And in reality, he is just this really innocent person that does not understand mortals at all. And it's just so hilarious, especially from Isabel's perspective, because she just cannot stop laughing at his reactions. And it is just a really fun read. It was close to being a four stars, it, but for me, it's one of those books that it's not gonna stay with me. I'm gonna remember it as a fun time, but that's about it. Although it will be one that I will happily reread, especially if I'm in a reading slump. I think this will be a good one to get me out of it because it is so funny and lighthearted. So I do recommend it. If you're looking for something that's just that little bit more lighthearted, then give this one a try. It was very funny in places. And to be honest, I didn't really know where the story was going at all, which it didn't intrigue me, but it also wasn't a bad thing either. It was just something where it wouldn't have mattered how this book ended, it still would have been a fun time. So not a bad start to the week. I'm not quite sure what I want to read next. I am thinking of having a break from all the romance that I've been reading, but for now I really do need to get to work and my camera battery is flashing at me. So I guess I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Good evening. Please excuse the late night bed look. It's been a long couple of days. I didn't update at all yesterday because Monday evening I didn't finish work till very late. I then got told I had to be at the Greenwich branch and so I stayed at my partner's house but did not bring the camera. So I did not update the vlog at all on what I'm currently reading which I am now almost halfway through and it's getting interesting because I am reading Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson and this is really good, I'm not gonna lie. It's not as good as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I do prefer that one. I should probably explain what this is. This is a murder mystery. We are following Pip, who in the first book solved a cold case that had happened in her town five years previously. And so in the second book, she now has a podcast where she was talking about everything that happened, shared all her findings and how she found out what really happened. And now there is season two because there is a missing person and the police won't do anything to help because he's not seen as high risk. And so Pippa takes up the case and I'll admit it was a bit slow at first, like it really wasn't seeming as good. But now I'm at that halfway point or just over halfway and it really is picking up and I'm really enjoying it. And there's just some 
twists and turns that it's taking it's good it's it's like i said it's not going to be a five stars it's not quite as good as the first book which seems to be the general opinion about this book but it's by no means bad i think it's still interesting it's still an intriguing plot line you do want to know what's happened what's caused everything to happen and of course pip is our main character and she is a really great main character she's very sarcastic very smart she's definitely changed a bit which you would expect from after everything that happened in a good girl's guide to murder but yeah it's definitely an enjoyable one so i'm hoping to stay on track with the amount of books i need to get read that i'm gonna finish this tonight but it is quite late and as you can see i'm looking pretty tired so i don't know if that's gonna happen but i really need it to because i need to finish a book every two days for the next two and a bit weeks to actually finish my TBR on time. That's a bit ambitious, but you never know. I mean, this is an easy read because there's a lot of formatting in this book. You have interview notes, you have text messages, you have emails. There's loads and loads of different things that are going on in this and it really, really does work and it does make it a very quick read. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Hopefully the next update will be, hey, I finished this and it's gonna be tomorrow morning, but I don't know guys, I guess we'll see. Good morning, I've had a really productive morning. I've already filmed my book haul for the month, which I was very pleased with, which will already be up by the time this video comes up. So if you haven't watched that, I do suggest you check it out. It was a lot of fun and I got some good books, which I was very happy with. I did finish Good Girl Bad Blood last night and it was good. It didn't quite reach that five star mark, which I knew, but it did end up being quite a high four stars. I really enjoyed the twist that happens in this book. The person that was behind all of this, I kind of figured out pretty early on, but the rest of it and the other twists that came into play, I really, really didn't see coming and I really liked that. And I know I've already said, but I really did enjoy Pippa's growth as a character. And honestly, I'm wondering if there might be a third book. There's nothing really on Goodreads apart from like an untitled book, but she's left it in a way that there could possibly be a third book. Honestly, Holly Jackson's becoming an author that I would happily pick up her books regardless of what it is because I think she does her character work really well and I really did enjoy the mystery elements in both books. Now, however, I need to decide what I'm reading next, and I'm kind of torn between two books, and that is Vicious Spirits by Kat Cho. This is the second book, the first book being Wicked Fox, and that's set in South Korea, and we're following Korean mythology, which I really enjoyed, and that book is all about a gummy ho, a girl who is a gummy ho, which is fox spirit in mythology, and she has to consume the souls of men to stay alive and I really enjoyed that story. I thought it was really well done. This book, we are following the Dockerby, which we do have mentioned within Wicked Fox. We're not following the same main characters. We have different main characters, but they're the side characters from Wicked Fox. So I'm excited to see how this one goes. However, my other choice, is Cinder by Marissa Meyer and this is a Cinderella retelling with sci-fi influence and it's been on my TBR for the longest time. I only recently bought it but it's been on my radar for a long time to actually pick up and read this book because I do enjoy a good retelling. So I have to decide which of these two books I actually want to read. I'm kind of leaning more towards Vicious Spirits because I really did enjoy Wicked Fox and I've been looking forward to getting this book. However, they're both on my TBR. I do need to pick up both of them and yeah, I guess we'll just see what I feel like reading. But that's it for now. I'll catch up with you a bit later because I'm heading over to my partner's house to get some editing done and make use of their very good Wi-Fi. So I'll catch up with you a little bit later. I feel like I've been doing an awful job at updating this vlog yet again. It has been a really hectic couple of days. I haven't even read much. Like, it just hasn't happened. Wednesday, as I said, I did end up going over to my partner's and I edited my book haul video and then we spent the afternoon up in central London, which we both really enjoyed. We just kind of wander around, going to a few different shops depending on our mood. And we also went out for dinner at Abino, which is a Japanese omelette restaurant, which I absolutely love. I think it's brilliant food. They cook it in front of you and it's always, always tasty. I've spoken about them before, but honestly, great food. And then yesterday I had work and I also went over to my sister's after work for dinner and ended up staying till really really late. I didn't get home till gone 10 o'clock at night but it was so much fun just to be able to catch up with her, have a good gossip, have some good food and just 
honestly just catch up with her because with everything that's been going on lately we just haven't been able to meet up as often as we used to which is a shame because we're really close it was great fun i really really enjoyed it but it has meant that the last couple of days i have barely read at all i did pick up vicious spirits by cat cho in the end which to be fair, I think that was pretty obvious that that was the one I was leaning towards. I'm enjoying it, but I haven't even reached the 100 page mark over two days, so I can't even count that as reading because I kind of see it as I have to read like a minimum of 50 pages a day to count it as reading. That's just a personal goal that I set myself and haven't even managed that the last couple of days. But I am really enjoying this book. Unfortunately, I can't tell you too much about the plot of this book because it will give away things that happen at the end of Wicked Fox and they're big spoilers, so I really can't talk about it. But I can say we are following Juno and Sumin, which are two of the side characters that I really liked from Wicked Fox. Sumin is this character who is pretty much a firecracker. She's got a temper on her, but she's fiercely loyal to her friends and she has a set of rules that she holds herself to and I really love her as a character. I think she's absolutely great. I'm really excited to discover more things about her. And then we have Juno, who is the Dockerby and there is more to him than what it seems. He comes across as this selfish, arrogant goblin who wants nothing more than just to make a buck. However, there is so much more to him than meets the eye and I'm enjoying discovering his past and who he is as a character. And the way these two interact, I think is just really, really fun. And I think it's really well done. There are some really interesting things that are happening in the world because of the events at the end of Wicked Fox. And yes, I just, I really, really am enjoying it. If you haven't read Wicked Fox, I really suggest you pick it up. I think it's a really good, fun book. If you like K-drama, it's K-drama in a book. It's really, really good. And I love the Korean setting. I think it's so atmospheric. It's, it's really well done. And this is just continuing on from the story, how it finished, but following it from different characters' perspectives. And it is, it's really, really enjoyable. The plan for today is to go to work, edit this vlog, because I haven't edited any of it, and then just read. I really just want an evening where I can just read because I just haven't had that for the last few days and I really am missing it. Hopefully get this finished on Saturday. I don't think that's gonna happen. I just don't think I'm gonna finish my TBR this month. It's been such a hectic couple of weeks that I just haven't been at my usual reading level, which I'm normally able to do easily, but I just, the weeks are just going by. Like I just can't keep up with any of it at the minute. I just feel like I blink and a day's over, so. We'll see how this goes, but I need to stop rambling, I need to get to work, and fingers crossed, I'm going to read some more of this. Good morning, I had a very much needed evening of just relaxing and reading. I was just so worn out from this week and to be fair, even working today, I'm kind of dreading. I just, I need it to be over and then I can have a day off and just rest and relax because I desperately need it. But last night I did finally get round to painting the edges of the damned. I've been wanting to do this since I got the book because I did the same for the beautiful and now the damned has lovely lilac edges which it's not showing up completely the right colour. Oh there we go. But I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. It actually turned out really smooth for once and I kind of tried matching this colour here. I'm really pleased with the way it looks. I think they look great together and I will be continuing to do this for any more of the books that are coming out. I think there's been some rumours that this is going to be a series and not just a duology which oh my god I hope so because I loved The Beautiful. Also I did read a decent chunk of Vicious Spirits. I've really enjoyed this story. To give you an overview without doing any spoilers for Wicked Fox we have Summon who is one of our main characters this time and she is seeing ghosts. So we have our world and then we have the spirit realm and there is a tear between the two and that's allowing ghosts to come over into our world and Summon can see them. So Summon and Juno are working together to try and stop this from happening and fix it all before things start going terribly wrong as well as exploring their feelings for each other and I'm just really enjoying it. Like, I think it's really good. I like Sommin as a main character. There are parts of her that I can just really connect with, which I think is always a bonus whenever you can read a book and you really connect with one of the main characters. I think it's brilliant. I plan on finishing this tonight and I think it's gonna come out at four stars, just like Wicked Fox did, because they're both enjoyable books. They both have a really decent plot line. I think they're a great read, especially with the culture and the characters that are in here. I think it's really well done. I do enjoy these books. 
but for now as I said I've got one more day of work to get through and then tomorrow I am planning on finally editing this vlog because I still haven't done that and just resting and reading all day I don't plan on leaving my room that is my Sunday fingers crossed we can get through today first <laughs> it's a bit later on Saturday it's Saturday afternoon and I got sent home from work because I'm really feeling really rough today, I'm not gonna lie, I'm so, so tired. So I have pretty much spent most of my day so far just napping, but I have just finished Vicious Spirits and I gave it the four stars, I knew it was gonna be a four star read, I really enjoyed it, I liked the story that it was telling, we get more about Juno's past, how he became a Dockerbee, all of that was really good and I like how they wrap everything up at the end. There's also a lot of commentary about learning to be yourself for yourself rather than always putting other people first, even when you're trying to help them and it's because you care about them, but learning to, you know, allow yourself to be yourself. So there's a lot of commentary about that in here, which I really enjoyed, and I think it added a lot of depth to the story. So. Yeah, it was, it was good. I also do like how it still had the mythology chapters that are put throughout the story where you get mythology about Dockerby and how they came to be and the different lore surrounding them. So I do really enjoy these books. They're very immersive, very culturally rich and yeah, it's just a really good book. If I manage to stay awake and feel up to it. I'm also going to try and start Rhapsodic. This is one I'm picking up because of the fact that I am so worn out today and I'm really not able to focus a lot. This is more of a fantasy romance story that I don't think there's going to be loads that I need to pay attention to throughout this. So I'm hoping that this one will be a nice, easy, enjoyable read something that I can just chill to when I'm feeling awake enough to read. But for now I'm actually just gonna have a nap because I am exhausted and I will catch up with you across the weekend. Good morning, I'm feeling a lot better now. I still feel a little bit drained but nowhere near as bad as yesterday. I think just pretty much sleeping all day really did help. But I did also finish Rhapsodic by Laura Thalassa and <sighs> I can totally understand where some of the reviews on this book is pretty much it's a recent fan fiction story because there are so many similarities between the two main characters. So we do have Desmond Flynn in this one and like Resand, he is a king of the Night Court, just as Resand was High Lord of the Night Court. We have both of them having bat-like wings, we also have both of them having tattoos, and they both make deals with their respective love interests and use it to force them to look after themselves, and they both keep a lot of secrets and stuff. It's They're very, very similar characters. This storyline is obviously different. We are following our main character, Callie, who is a siren, and I really liked the siren aspect of this story. I actually thought that was really well done. And we do have a mystery happening because within the other world where Desmond rules, he is finding that some of his subjects are going missing and the women are coming back, but they're coming back with babies and these babies are not normal. And so he enlists the help of Callie, calling in her debts, to help find out what is going on. And you also have the budding romance between them two, and it is a good romance book, I will give it that. I end up giving it four stars. In all honesty, if I compare this to the other dark fantasy book that I've read this month, which is From Blood and Ash, I preferred that. I think because it was more of an original story, the characters were uniquely themselves, which I really appreciated, and I loved the vampire element and the vampire war going on, and I appreciated all of that, whereas this was a bit too similar to A Court of Mist and Fury for my liking, and as much as I still enjoyed it, and it is different in its own way, and if you love A Court of Mist and Fury, give this one a try, it's a good it's a good way to continue that vibe, but I can also say it's not one that I'm desperate to pick up the sequel to, whereas with From Blood and Ash, I cannot wait to pick up the sequel to that book. So this one ended up being a four stars. I think it possibly could have been higher, it could have got to that five star mark if it weren't for just a couple of things, and one of the main ones being there was inconsistencies in the writing, there was actually mistakes in here, where words were used where they shouldn't have been, so like his 
instead of he and then words that have been spelt incorrectly and it's just those sort of things really pull me out of a book and I find it hard to ignore it. Don't wrong, I did enjoy parts of this, it is quite funny. We have some Harry Potter references which I actually quite liked, I found those quite funny. And I did laugh out loud in places, I really like Temper, one of the side characters, she's hilarious. But there is just some things in the writing where I'm just not quite as keen. It kind of reminds me of a blend between Crescent City and A Court of Mist and Fury. And as much as I loved both of those books, having it compiled into this one with writing errors, it was just a little bit frustrating. But it was good enough that I still really enjoyed the story, I still enjoyed the characters, and I will probably continue with this, but it's just not like a desperate need to get to it. I am going to wrap up the vlog and leave it here for this week. I think, honestly, I've actually picked up my reading speed quite nicely. I did slow down a wee bit in the middle, but with having yesterday to just sleep and read all day, it really has allowed me to catch up. No idea what I'm going to read next, but I have another six, I think it's six books to get through, so I've got pretty much enough choice to get me started. If you have enjoyed this weekly vlog, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Do let me know some of the books that you've been reading this week. And as always, all my social media links to my Instagram, Goodreads and Twitter will be linked below, and I'll catch you in the next one.